Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And I do apologize as always guys, I am under the weather right now so I probably sound terrible. I probably don't sound as energetic so please bear with me. I do apologize. I, you know, it is what it is. We just got to get through it. But overall, we are going to be talking about Hedera Hashgraph today or HBAR if you will. Now, overall, I'm going to be addressing a lot of things in regards to adoption happening as well as a little bit of speculation as well. So overall, sit back, you know, grab some popcorn or something, whatever, grab yourself a snack and let's get into it. Let's talk about what's happening. So first off, we're talking about, you know, the overall market real quick. We're just kind of addressing what's happening. So we obviously see Bitcoin kind of still ranging. We're probably seeing a lot more volume flow into it. We do see Bitcoin dominance is around 47.1%, which is as expected. Now, uh, throughout the market right now, we are seeing some altcoins mostly bleed out. This is expected as well with the dominance being so high. Uh, now, we also are watching, you know, HBAR closely as we do see HBAR down here at around 36 cents, kind of changing into that nice little, you know, red pattern down about 0.66%, down about 0.30 now. But overall, most altcoins are kind of doing the same thing. You know, their volume is flat in terms of trading volume because trading volume to volume on the charts is two completely different things. Excuse me. But overall, when we're talking about uh, HBAR right now, um, this is pretty much the basis for a lot of altcoins. The trading volume is fairly low. Not a lot of people are buying altcoins right now. And a lot of people are just kind of sitting on their hands waiting for the next major move in the market, which is, you know, either a wave three or a wave five, depending on where we go from here. We really got to see something, you know, invalidate or validate what's the next major move for Bitcoin. And we will go from there. Now, I do understand that I upload a lot of videos talking about the market and a lot of people think that it is the same thing over and over again. Just kind of repeat it. It's not that it's me giving you guys still the updates on what's happening, what I still see happening. If my ideas have changed, because I do see a lot of people ask me, hey, Nick, are you still expecting this? Hey, Nick, are you still expecting that? And instead of me, you know, going through all of those messages and really kind of, you know, giving you guys that insight it's much more easier for me to really kind of give you guys those micro and also macro updates on you know the long term and short term uh, basis so overall when i upload you know an update on the market it's me giving you guys my viewpoint still and where they are and if they are the same or not now let's just jump into this and let's talk about hedera hashgraph now first off we have this tweet coming from christian hasker if you guys don't know who he is essentially he works for hedera as ma mainly i think he is the uh, marketing head around uh hedera now overall he does say here can anybody who has had their face melted let me know how painful that procedure is i'm not great with pain now it's funny that he is saying this because overall you know he's kind of given us a little bit of a hint on what we are going to be expecting and i do uh, kind of, you know, the, he's not giving us too much insight here, of course, but it's overall the idea that if we are patient, we will see those massive gains on HBAR. We will see our faces being melted um, by around, I, I believe, the November, December time frame, probably within the next two months, maybe even three months, depending on if we do top out around January, similar to what XRP did. Now, just remember, XRP did 22 cents to about three dollars and 84 cents on, you know, a few exchanges in the span of one month so please be focused on the bigger picture focus on how fast these altcoins could really kind of move when they do start to break out and i do think that we will see that basis going along the lines of you know even hbar as well so i'm really very excited about what the future has to hold for a lot of these crypto assets now let's actually talk about crypto adoption now we do see here um, the U.S. Treasury says it must modernize and adapt to digital currencies. It's funny that we are seeing a lot of, you know, government officials kind of saying this now. Uh, we've been seeing this happening for a fairly long time. And I think that this is the start of what's actually going to be happening as we do march forward on in time. Now, of course, they were talking about, you know, the idea of cyber, you know, warfare, if you will, between, you know, crypto and all that kind of stuff in regards to ransomware, cyber attacks, all that kind of stuff. But we do know that if they looked into things, if they actually studied a lot of the assets out there like HBAR, they'd understand that the overall security measurements behind it are the highest grade security measurements. So something like that, in my opinion, would be you know a lot better to innovate with just my overall basis now it's not me being biased or anything like that it's just me being honest uh, we want that high-grade security now of course 
We do see here the growing use of digital assets was hampering the implementation of sanctions while balancing funds from legitimate humanitarian organizations. They were talking about better communication between itself and the crypto industry. Of course, I think that we do need that because we are seeing a lot of, you know, winners and losers being picked, you know, from the SEC and stuff, which I've obviously reported on many times on this channel. So I'm kind of focused on what this actually, you know, turns out to become because we are seeing this as well. Russia aims to replace the U.S. dollar reserves with digital assets in the long term. Digital assets are starting to become the new thing, guys. I've, I've been talking to you guys about this for a very long time in regards to, you know, crypto adoption and crypto innovation. And I know that I say I've been talking to you guys about this for a long time. I know I use that phrase a lot and I do apologize greatly, but it is the idea that I've been pretty much hampering on this idea for a very long time on this channel, considering the fact that when we're talking about crypto, I do think that it does have incredible disruption you know when we're talking about these major markets that you know this technology could really kind of innovate within so i think that this is great to see and i think that this again allows us to see the dollar gaining a lot of hate if you will not hate but speculation behind it you know a lot of these major countries are kind of seeing the idea of us spending money on absolutely garbage and nothing at all and it's you know it's the idea of us pretty much lowering the idea of the value on the US dollar so a lot of these countries are choosing not to utilize it anymore and I you know I don't blame them at all now we also see here tokens.com acquires a 50% stake in virtual real estate firm metaverse group now the reason why I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about this um, the best part about this is this is Decentraland or mana but this is going to tell you how big the NFT and decentralized finance or DeFi space could actually become. When we're talking about public retail investors, they're really kind of seeking this greater exposure, for, uh, exposure from a lot of these major you know, digital assets like this. And when we're talking about virtual real estate, this is huge to say the least. Uh, this is almost, it feels like I'm in the movie uh, Ready Player One. And I think that this is awesome to see. Just from my standpoint, because I love technology, I love digitization, and I think that this is really kind of the end goal here for crypto. I think it's the idea of digitization of pretty much everything. Virtual real estate is going to be a growing demand in, in time, especially when we're talking about NFT. So that is awesome to see. Now, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about this IBM article here. Now, of course, they are talking about interoperability and they are working with, you know, Hyperledger Fabric sort of ideas or technologies. Now, we do see here the IBM blockchain platform is proud to announce our tech preview with Hedera Hashgraph, presenting a step uh, towards increased interoperability for enterprise blockchain networks, looking for the transparency of public but privacy of permission networks. Now, you might be wondering, well, this is not any, you know, new news, so... What is so great about this? Well, it's the idea since we began our relationship with Hedera, they have done nothing but deliver valuable innovations that support and enhance capabilities within the enterprise blockchain space. Now, the best part about this is what we've seen today within this. French trial CBDC, blockchain for government bond deals. The CBDC experiment is one of the EU's largest to date with nearly 500 transactions executed during trial. The best part about this is that this is used, developed by a US-based IBM, which when we're talking about this, it does have direct correlation to Hedera Hashgraph. This is again, those CBDC breadcrumbs, which I've talked about um, just today with you know XRP. And when we're talking about a lot of these CBDCs, a lot of stuff like this is happening over time. And of course they are working with IBM on this. And I would not be surprised if Hedera had their hands in the pot for this because we always talk about what Hedera is doing with MTech in regards to the banking structure and CBDCs and all that kind of stuff. And then of course, we do know that you know South Korea's largest bank joins Hedera Governing Council. I wonder why they're going to be using it to bolster the efficiency of many of its internal processes. I wonder what that could be. We're seeing a lot of things kind of be speculated here. But of course, when we're talking about CBDCs, it's no joke. And I really do think that Hedera Hashgraph will be at the front running for that. And uh, I'm very, very excited for what's to come for HBAR because I think that what we are seeing is just the small, you know, breadcrumbs of what's to actually happen as we do march forward on in time. And HBAR is truly a massive giant within this space that a lot of people aren't realizing just yet. But we soon will see that, especially once we do see the value unlocked. Now we also see here uh, with USDC on Hedera, it will be cheaper and faster to send your USD than with traditional Visa and MasterCard networks. 
plus you are in charge of your money. Many online shopping websites will start accepting USDC and Hedera based stablecoins will be most widely used HBAR. And this is the end goal. This is what we really kind of want to see in retail adoption. And I think that this is also, you know, some sort of nice little speculation as well, because when we're talking about this, you know, it is going to be cheaper and faster than, you know, Visa or MasterCard. And that's what I've always said when we talk about Visa and MasterCard moving over to a DLT technology like HBAR to kind of innovate with and build with, because, you know, at some point in time, they are going to be, in my opinion, outdone. They are going to be, you know, out developed. They're going to be out innovated. And uh, it's the idea that they need to prosper into the new age of technology through something like a distributed ledger technology. I don't know, maybe, you know, HBAR. Um, but I've been talking about that ever since, you know, going all the way back to as early as April, where I said that Visa and MasterCard would, you know, essentially do great things if they did work with a DLT technology. And, you know, when we're talking about the speeds of HBAR, I think that it's a clear choice. And of course, with the security measurements that Hedera Hashgraph does have, you know, it's a no brainer in my opinion for that. Now, again, you know, when we're talking about all of this kind of stuff, when we're talking about stable coins, we always talk about stable coins in regards to financial stability throughout these markets. You know, when banks want to utilize something in terms of a CBDC, they want stability. And I think that USDC is the perfect choice for them, as we do know it is US based. And, uh, you know, I couldn't choose a better power couple than USDC and Hedera Hashgraph. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys don't want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. If you guys do want more content, you guys are more than welcome to check out ncashofficial.com. But with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Where you guys are, just be with us. Nick, peace out, guys.